I have to admit, I had no idea what to expect on my first visit to Antisana National Park. What I discovered left me in awe. Hidden among the central highlands and eastern slopes of the Ecuadorian Andes, the park shelters a remarkable combination of glaciers, extensive moorland, lagoons, valleys, rugged mountains, waterfalls, rivers, and thick forests rich in biodiversity. Crucially, the National Park also provides the water on which thousands of people downstream depend. Feelings of admiration and wonder grow as we gradually explore this unique national park, ranging from the steamy foothills of the Amazon to the ice-bound summit of the Antisana volcano itself. This journey unveils a natural world full of surprises at every step. Welcome to Antisana. First stop, the glaciers and moorland, known as Paramos. The upper zone of the protected area is crowned by the impressive Antisana volcano. Its glacier is the largest in the country, with an area of more than 11 square kilometers. According to the locals, the last eruption occurred approximately 420 years ago, and it officially remains potentially active. The melting of the Antisana glacier originates tributaries to a number of important rivers. On the north flank, the springs of the Papayakta River are born. On the eastern and southern flanks trickle the small streams that further down merge into the Quijos River, while on the western flank the glacier produces the Antisana. A few minutes are well spent admiring the enormous plains that surround the lagoons and the volcano. This tall yellowish grass is characteristic of the high altitude param, a harsh environment that yet harbors a surprising variety of life forms. A significant number of plants and animals have adapted to endure in extreme conditions where even oxygen is scarce. Thanks to the structure of its soil and vegetation, Paramo has a great capacity for absorbing water from both rain and glacial melt. Acting much like a sponge, Paramo absorbs water and distributes it between rivers and springs and also stores a large amount underground. This characteristic is of vital importance for the plants, animals and people who live downstream. Paramo is one of the main sources of water for irrigation, drinking water and hydroelectric power. The emblematic La Mica Lagoon provides water to more than half of the inhabitants of Quito, Ecuador's capital city. On our way to the lagoon, we spotted a number of remarkable animals and plants, which we're able to observe more closely upon arrival. Caruncolated caracara is one of the most representative bird species of the Antisana para. Colorful, with its contrasting black and white plumage and intense orange face, throat and legs, it can be seen at a distance, contrasting with the yellow moorland glasses. While black and white predominate in adult caracaras, juveniles are brown and blend in with the background. This species can be found from 2,700 meters altitude right up to the edge of the glacier. It is common to see pairs and groups of up to five individuals, but sometimes up to 50 or more have been observed. They usually build their nests in rocky areas, such as ravines with high walls. Despite being a bird of prey, the caronculated caracara eats many things. It hunts mice, small rabbits, frogs, but is also partial to large numbers of earthworms, beetles and moths, and when the opportunity arises, carrion. 
the Andean condor. Never have I seen such a large and majestic bird. The flight of a condor reminds me of a glider. Effortless and silent. Condor is one of the largest birds in the world, with a wingspan of three and a half meters from tip to tip when fully open. Males are endowed with a characteristic crest on their heads and have brown eyes, while females do not have a crest and their eyes are red. Condors play a fundamental role in Andean ecosystems, since as vultures, they are responsible for cleaning them. Soaring over great distances, condors feed on the carrion of animals that die, efficiently eliminating possible sources of disease in mountain habitats. Andean condors can live up to 80 years of age. They incubate only one egg at a time, and the chicks need to be cared for by their parents for at least two years. The condor is distributed throughout the Ecuadorian Andes, mainly at altitudes of between 1.5 and, and 4,000 meters, Paramo being its preferred habitat. Steep cliffs surrounded by vast Paramo moorlands offer quiet and safe places for the condors to roost, raise their young, as well as search for food. These remote places are key for the survival of this endangered species threatened by extinction. The population size of the Andean condor is low. According to current estimates, less than 200 individuals in all of Ecuador. Let us not forget that Andean Cosmovision reveres the condor as a messenger of the gods. The Antisana Park Rangers had told us that our visit would not be complete without first observing a singular type of bird. Apparently very abundant 10 or 15 years ago, it is nowadays rare and very elusive. After six hours on horseback, at an elevation of 3,700 meters, we came across the black-faced ibis. Still very little is known about this rare species, other than its population size is extremely low. The last census carried out in 2018 revealed an estimate of just 134 birds in the entire country, the vast majority of which are protected in this national park. In Antisana, the black-faced ibis spends several hours a day foraging in open and quiet spaces such as grassy plains, marshes, and along the banks of streams and lagoons. Mated pairs build nests and raise their chicks on high, rocky cliffs. But Antisana isn't populated only by birds. There are mammals too. White-tailed deer abound in the Paramo surrounding the peak. Sometimes standing as tall as one meter, the males alone have antlers, which sometimes reach 60 centimeters in length. The deer are usually found in herds of some 10 individuals that may be concentrated around a lactating female or clusters of adult males over a year old. However, the size of these groups is very variable in Antisana, it is not uncommon to find large herds of more than 40 individuals. White-tailed deer in this environment prefer open areas where they forage for herbs, shoots, leaves, and the soft branches of bushes and trees. Occasionally, we observe them eating fruits and seeds. Deer can run very fast when they feel threatened. The white-tailed deer of Antisana are no exception. The Paramo of the Antisana National Park is the most fascinating of places, the perfect setting to connect with nature. I am in awe at the complexity of the glaciers, dazzled by the multicolored swamps and placid lagoons, and fascinated by the delicate mosaic of mosses that cushion the ground. The Andean Fox A solitary species, it is active both during the day and night. It travels long distances in search of food. Its natural prey, consisting mainly of rabbits and some birds. Like all foxes, it is not above feeding on carrion when it has to. Andean foxes usually take refuge in caves, holes or cracks and are hard to see. You can imagine our delight when this fox approached us. This individual remained nearby for several minutes, which allowed us to take a closer look. With ruddy colored fur and bushy tailed, the Andean fox is the size of a domestic dog. Without a doubt, being in this magical place brought me closer to nature. 
A long walk brings us to a forest straight out of a fairy tale. Shrouded in dense fog, upon closer inspection, we see that the bark of the trees appears to be made of paper. This unique tree is very common in these parts. Polylepis, known in the Andean Quechua tongue as Yahual, or the paper tree, is the only tree species to become forest at high altitude. Polylepis adapts very well to the cold climate of the high mountains due to the fact that its leaves are covered with fine, hair-like appendages called trichomes. The trunk is covered with small flowers and the characteristically loose papery bark. Polylepis forests are part of the natural vegetation of the Antisana Paramo and are of great biological importance, harboring many species of birds, small mammals, reptiles and insects that use these forests to hide from predators, forage and reproduce. These forests play an additionally important role in fragile high Andean ecosystems, particularly in cloudy areas where they contribute to soil formation as well as water storage and regulation. Polylepis forests today are among the most threatened of Andean habitats due to illegal logging and fire that decimate their extension. The Antisana National Park is an important refuge for these truly unique elfin habitats. Below the limit of the Antisana Paramo, lies the mysterious cloud or montane forest. This ecosystem occupies about half the area of the national park. Cloud forest is of great importance as a home for an enormous diversity of plant and animal species and also for its exceptional service storing and regulating water supply. Cloud forest trees intercept and filter fog and rain, effectively supplying water to the ecosystem. A particular characteristic of cloud forests is the great abundance of lianas, vines and epiphytes, such as the strangely shaped and vividly coloured bromeliads. Many tree trunks are almost completely covered by mosses and lichens, which commonly settle in the more humid parts of the forest. The amount of water stored by vegetation in these forests can reach up to 50,000 litres per hectare, which is why they are very important water regulators for the lowlands, especially during the summer. Among the great variety of animal species, the enigmatic Andean or spectacle bear stands out. This is the only type of bear native to South America. In Ecuador, the species occupies paramos, as well as Andean and cloud forests. Black shiny fur, contrasting with the white spectacles around its eyes and snout, give it an air of elegance. The particular shape and extent of these white markings are in effect unique to each individual. They are akin to our own fingerprints, and this allows us to distinguish between individuals. Spectacle bears play an extremely important role in mountain ecosystems. Considered the gardeners of the forests, their way of feeding modifies the distribution of different plant species. They contribute to pollination and they are excellent seed dispersers. When climbing trees to rest or to spend the night in the nests they build in the canopy, they often break off branches, allowing sunlight to pass through and reach the ground, thus allowing young plants beneath to grow and thrive. The spectacle bears of Ecuador are considered endangered, mainly due to the loss and fragmentation of their habitat. This is a direct consequence of the relentless advance of agriculture. Extractive activities such as mining and bushfires in grasslands and forests. Hunting is another major threat, whether for their skin, fat or claws, or as a result of human wildlife conflict in rural areas where bears are known to prey on crops, mainly corn as well as on domestic livestock. 
These unfortunate events are in turn a result of poor agricultural practices. An hour travelling down the mountain brings us to gently sloping plains that merge into the Amazon region. Here we find dense, biodiverse forests of medium height, hidden in the clouds. These foothill or Piedmont forests are found at the confluence of the Andes mountain range and the Amazon basin. The climate is humid and moderately warm. These ecosystems are of great importance with a high biodiversity of flora and fauna. Biodiversity here is in fact even more visible than in the Highland Paramo, as testified by frequent encounters with a rich variety of vividly coloured birds. The tops of the tallest trees reach 30 metres high. Their trunks and branches are lavishly draped with mosses, orchids and ferns. A large number of waterfalls and streams embellish this ecosystem and are yet another reminder of the great capacity of this protected area to provision lowland areas with water. Of historical note, in 1802, the famous German scientist and explorer Alexander von Humboldt arrived in Ecuador. During his expeditions, Humboldt was captivated by the Andean landscape, and his adventurous spirit led him to climb mountains such as Pichincha, Corazon, Illinisas, Tunguragua, Cotopaxi, Chimborazo, and of course Antizana, which he reached by clambering along what is now known as the Antisanilla lava flow. During his stay, Humboldt carried out specific studies in this area, working out of a modest hut now known as Humboldt's House, located among the folds at the base of the Antisana mountain. Humboldt made a topographical survey of the volcano, carried out barometric and geographical measurements, and collected volcanic samples. Finally, he and his team escalated 5,404 meters up the Antisana peak, an altitude never before reached by another human being. One of Humboldt's most important contributions was in the field of botany. During his stay in Ecuador, he collected more than 30,000 samples of the local flora, many of which were species new to science. Humboldt was also responsible for coining the term Avenue of the Volcanoes, to describe Ecuador's entire inter-Andean valley, which contains more than 70 volcanoes and mountains. The stewardship, protection and conservation of this remarkable protected area falls within the remit of Ecuador's Ministry of the Environment, Water and Ecological Transition. The groundwork is conducted by an exceptional team made up of the National Park Administration along with its technical specialists and rangers. The park rangers not only carry out control and surveillance in the Antisana National Park, they are also responsible for serving the public and helping visitors connect with nature. The rangers also lead efforts for environmental education by sharing their experiences and explaining the characteristics and dynamics of the various ecosystems, training interns and generating interesting and useful activities implemented by volunteers from local educational institutions. The tasks and actions of a park ranger require a great deal of passion for nature, as well as technical training and the physical resistance to withstand long working hours, which often involve hiking under difficult conditions. At the national level, park rangers are the first line of protection and conservation of biodiversity, both within and outside the national system of protected areas. Having shared much of this trip with the rangers of the Antisana National Park, learning from them along the way, I am convinced that their presence is fundamental. 
Without them, the conservation of this wonderful place would not be possible. To travel and discover the natural treasures of Ecuador is truly a privilege. People say that you travel to get away from reality, but what could be more real than this? The beautiful Paramo, the mysterious cloud forest, the wonderful people we met along the way. Among them, a small group of silent heroes, the park rangers, charged with protecting the Antisana National Park and its invaluable biodiversity, landscapes and people.